live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of how to effectively use the hourly charts in real life. Ladies and gentlemen, traders from around the world, stock market fans, investors, trading enthusiasts, and real life traders. How's everyone doing on this beautiful day, evening, night, weekend, weekday, birthday, holiday, <laughs> Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, or leap year, depending on where you are in the world or when you're watching this. Jesse says, great. Jerry says, the janitor. <laughs> it's one of my nicknames because I'm always cleaning up the stock market. <laughs> Actually rolled her eyes in the background. It's a great, it's a great pun. I think it's solid. Richard says, tired but excellent. Awesome. Justin, how's it going? Scott says, look who it is. The man, the myth, the legend. No, nah, man, that's you. That's you, brother. Hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm so excited to have you all here. Thank you so much. If you're watching in the recording, we are broadcasting live. So there are people here live. And if you're watching from the recording on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook, thanks so much for watching. Feel free to stay tuned to the very end. You know why? Zero sales pitch. I'm not going to ask you for your money. Our mission at Real Life Trading is to enrich lives. And what I'm simply hoping that you'll do, tell your friends about Real Life Trading because our goal is to teach people about the stock market, how the stock market works, and how you can effectively and slowly become a better trader. And through that, you'll slowly become a better person. It's amazing. I love the experience. I love the journey. And I'm ready to rock it out with you guys. So let's do this. Steve says, I made over 130% on the SPY today. Thank you, my man. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm loving it. That's fantastic. Linderman says, my internet is really spotting today due to outages in the area. Might not be able to provide puns all night. Well, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do without you. <laughs> if you're not here, I don't really know how to run a class without Linderman. I don't think I've ever had a class without Justin Linderman. Uh, <laughs> can you think of one, Justin? Maybe three years ago, I think I had a class that you didn't attend live, but I'm not sure. It's somewhere on a calendar. It got lost. But anyway, I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you so much. Um, just to make sure, type in a one if you can see my screen okay and hear me okay. All right, beautiful. Got some ones. So tonight's class, again, is entitled How to Effectively Use the Hourly Charts. And what we're going to be doing tonight, kind of the five bullet points, is we're going to be talking about support and resistance, candlestick patterns, gaps, continuation patterns, and risk reward. Oh, man. So you got all these things going down, a lot of things to talk about. Um, one of the things that if you watch the second video, so just as a reminder, if you hop over here to a really cool website called reallifetrading.com, this is the third class under the education tab under the intermediate trading portion. Uh, so the first class, you have the second class, and this is going to be class number three. So just as a reminder, we're kind of following up. And then the fourth class, which is going to be tomorrow at 9.30 p.m., same, same exact time, uh, we're recording that one also if you can't make it live. But uh, it's going to be kind of a wrap-up of all the things we talked about in the intermediate portion. Because really my goal is in four classes, I'm going to teach you how to trade. Right, That's the beginning class. So you have an idea what the stock market is. You have an idea of how it works. Class, uh, the, the next four classes, the intermediate section, is understanding the why of the stock market. Like the sentiment, the build-up. What are people thinking? What are the thoughts? What are the time frames? What are you looking at and why? And then uh, the mastery section is just, well, once you got that down, here's some other cool ticks, uh, tricks and tips that you can use for your trading. So let's go ahead and hop into it. I'm gonna pick a stock that uh, we're all familiar with and I'm gonna be looking at some of that tonight. So let's go ahead and look at, I don't know, Netflix. Let's pull up Netflix. We looked at Netflix a lot just yesterday and in some of the other classes. So let's go ahead and kind of review Netflix and review a little bit about when you're doing your trading, what are we, what are you looking for, right? So first and foremost, when you first pull up a stock chart, look at a weekly chart and get an idea of its primary trend, right? Just as a, if you've never looked at a stock before, what is the primary trend of the stock? So if I'm looking at, I'll turn these blue lines off. So if you're looking at Netflix, the primary trend is bullish, right? Primary trend is bullish. If we are looking at uh, kind of an intermediate term on this perspective, right, on this time frame, 
you can see that we are in a kind of sideways move. We're going a little bit sideways here. So if I were to draw that uh, line for you, you can see that we're going a little bit sideways, kind of a distribution phase. So when we're in a trade, we're looking to buy low and sell high, right? So that's kind of the distribution phase where we're in. And very short term, the short term trade, we're looking at kind of this time frame right here, which you would probably suggest uh, bullish, right? So bullish on the primary, sideways on the intermediate, and bullish on the short term time frame. And again, that's the perspective we're looking at on the screen right now. That's the weekly chart. So then if we hop in here to the daily chart, we could kind of ask the exact same thing. So the daily chart, if this is this is the perspective, this is what you're looking at, you would say the primary trend on this is what? All right, so here's the perspective, here's what we're looking at, this is all we have on the chart. Primary trend is sideways. Yeah, primary trend is sideways. So that gives you the opportunity to know if you're ever sideways in your trend, look for the buy low, sell high, or the sell high, buy low portion of the stock. Look to buy at support, sell at resistance. Don't worry about moving averages, just buy low, sell high, buy at support, sell at resistance. Do that over and over and over. So that's the daily time frame. So in this example, uh, here would be your, your kind of intermediate time frame right here. Intermediate time frame, you guys would say is probably what? Bullish, yeah, you guys are absolutely correct. So intermediate time frame is bullish. And then of course, you have the short term time frame, somewhere pretty much in here. And that also would be, you know, it pulled back, that was bearish, and then right here, that's bullish. So you have two different trends in the short term picture on the daily chart. So that's a really good breakdown to get an idea of, okay, what am I doing, where am I looking at? And now you're gonna be coming up with, uh, so I'll put my lines back on the screen. You're gonna be coming up with your support and resistance line. So notice I really only have three lines. I have a brown line and I have two blue lines. These other lines, these drawings are just trades that I'm in or trades that other traders are in. So those are those lines. So really when you're drawing, and I covered this in the beginning section, you're going to be uh, focusing on less is more. So if you have 115 different lines on your screen, you're never gonna know which one's the most important. So my challenge to you would be, come up with as few uh, as possible for you. So three to five. Three to five on your daily chart of just lines. Boom, 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 boom. So in this situation, I have three. So again, this is a line chart. We're gonna come back over, we're gonna turn the candlestick chart on. And you'll notice right here, this candle, on the 14th of November, it traded right down to my purple line. Uh, I'm sorry, it's brown. So this is an old resistance. Old resistance becomes new support. And ladies and gentlemen, did we get buying pressure there? Did we get buying pressure there? And the answer is, yep, yes we did. How do we know that? We know that because of that lower shadow. Even though the candle is black, that lower shadow 100% represents buying pressure. So if we know buying pressure is coming in, then we should probably be keeping an eye out for a bullish trade. So in swing trades, you can use a lot of different time frames. But for most of you, if you're watching this video, if you're already into class three of the intermediate series, go ahead and just give yourself a pat on the back. Because if you're here, you already accomplished what most people have. A lot of traders, a lot of people probably watched the first few videos and they just gave up. They just quit. They, other, other things got ahead of them in their life. They didn't realize that the best investment that you can make is the investment in yourself. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the best. That's, that's what pays the best, the best dividends and gives you the best return is our investment into ourselves. So the fact that you're here, congratulations, right? So at this point, you probably know that you want to maybe be a little bit more active in trading. So when you're actively trading, when you're trading the stock market, the daily chart is a great time frame, but the hourly chart, and that's really the name of the class, how to effectively trade the hourly chart, is what gives you the bill paying money, as I like to as I like to call it. So just to give you a realistic, before we get in, well, should I do that now or should I do that later? Let me do that later. Uh, it's a cliffhanger. <laughs> just remind me, I want someone to remind me in about 30 minutes, if I haven't brought it up, real life example. Okay, just someone you can say that in about 30 minutes, just in case I haven't brought it up, and I'm sure I will. All right, so here's Netflix. So now we have the daily. Let's hop into the hourly chart. And now our perspective is going to change because here's our perspective on Netflix. And this is really about all the data that can fill up the screen. 
right? That's pretty much about it. Uh, you, you've got everything. So type into three, if you can clearly see the three phases of the market in just this hourly photo. I can see them clear as day and it really will help you kind of determine how you're going to be taking these trades, right? Again, use the past to help you plan for the future. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about, again, um, support and resistance, candlestick patterns, gaps, continuation patterns, and risk reward. And I'm going to stay here on Netflix for just a little bit. So we're going to stay here on Netflix for a bit. Um, let me see. I think I just. I think I'm just going to hide these lines for just a moment. And uh, let's say that this is your frame of reference. Okay, this is your primary chart. So earlier I mentioned. Let's go ahead and draw three to three to five lines max. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line here. I'm going to draw a line here. And now again, I'm using all past data, so I realize that I'm using this line. I'm going to use this line. And I'm going to use that line. So how many lines is that? Pretty easy to count. That's five lines. So it's not too cluttered, but what that does is it gives you a perspective. It gives you an idea of what it is that you're looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you first and foremost what I use to draw those lines. Now, I will say for me, in my stage of trading right now, this is already a little bit too many lines. <laughs> I could really just accomplish the same thing with three. And I'm just going to explain why really quickly. Right now, do I need this line on the screen? No, not really. Uh, I don't really need this line either because the stock is way the heck up here, right? So I probably need this one. I probably need this one. And I probably need this one. The other, the other two at the bottom, I need them earlier, but I don't need them now. I can always redraw them later. Do you guys agree? Now I'm gonna leave them on the screen, but I'm just saying you don't necessarily need them. Right? So you have a bunch of lines on the screen. Uh, sometimes it's just easier just to, you know, have the ones that you really need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point to the price action that I used to draw these support resistance lines. So my eyes were looking right here when I drew the very bottom line. All right. So I'm going to use different color arrows for the second line. So the second line, I use this candle as my number one go to. As soon as I saw that candle, I just drew it straight across. And ironically enough, it fit perfectly with that one and that one like a glove. The rest are going to be pretty easy to spot. Uh, the next line, I use these wicks right here from these candles. That's the only thing I use to draw that line, just those candles right there. Any guesses on what I used <laughs> for the other one? Same thing. Bam, 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 bam. Those are the candles I use to draw that. And then I use these candles right here to draw that line. So to give you an idea, those are all that I looked at. That's what my eyes were seeing. Now, of course, we're all going to have different perspectives when we draw support and resistance. These are my support and resistance lines. My support and resistance lines are not perfect. And I'm not going to say even that my lines are better than your lines. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like me saying, take two people and have them both draw an apple, like an actual like the fruit. If you had me and Ashley sit down. And each of us, each of us drew an apple. One apple would be better than the other. <laughs> like it's not even close. That, that being Ashley's, yeah, Ashley's would be would be way better. Like this, is, I can pretty much draw my apple for you right now. My apple would look like uh, okay, it has like a little bottom right there, and has a little a little stem, and like a little. That's not a bad apple for me. That's actually pretty good. It's not not a bad apple. But you could probably look at that and take a stab at what it is. Now, Ashley's is going to have, yeah, like some glitter. It's probably going to have, I don't know, someone eaten off of it. I mean, it's going to be exceptional. But what I'm getting at is just because you have two people, you're going to have two different perspectives on everything. Would you guys agree? You're going to have two different perspectives of everything. So if I have my support resistance lines, that's just what I see. That's not what you have to see. That's not what you should see. It's not the perfect line. It's just a line. Your picture and my picture might be different, but what's important is you're going to use your picture to create your diagram and your time frames and your perception, your framework of exactly what it is you want to do. So let's go ahead and answer one question really quick. Scott says, on the bottom line, why don't you have your line touching the bottom of the wicks? 
Um, so the bottom of the Wix, that's kind of like, in a way, similar to you saying, hey, how, how come your stem is not bigger on that, on that apple? Just to give you an idea. So again, it's more art than science, right? You're drawing. So scientifically, don't stress about if you give every single line. The reason I drew that line at the very, very bottom is because I wanted uh, a line that got really, really close to this lower shadow right here in the black circle. I wanted to get close to that. So I could draw it up a little bit more, but I'll draw in a big arrow, uh, the one candle that really stood out to me. Ironically enough, oops, that's a circle, sorry. Let me do an arrow. Let me just undo it. Okay, here is the, uh, here's the arrow right here. I wanted this candle, I wanted the open of that candle right there. I know that's a little bit of a harder one to see, but I wanted the open of that candle. And the reason why is because anytime you get, and remember we talked about this in the last class, a shaved bottom candle. Shaved bottom candles do represent really, really good support levels. And you'll notice that exact same thing applies when I have this line right here, this line right here, this line right here, and this line right here. You pretty much are intersecting with the open of really strong bullish candles. And that's just gonna happen naturally. You can always look for those, but it's gonna happen pretty naturally. So at this point, I've got myself a lot, a lot, a lot of um, lines on the start. Scott says, I see, so it's not just the touches, it's the quality of the candles. Bam, good breakthrough, man. Solid learning experience right there. Yep, you're absolutely right. It's the quality of the candle. So you're looking at the candles and you're saying, did the stock actually bounce here? Like, did it do what you wanted it to do? Could you look at it and say, yeah, we absolutely bounced at this price. That's kind of what you're looking for. So now let's just kind of draw the lines that are gonna be most important to our, uh, our conversation as of now. All right, so I have that support level and I have this one. So these are gonna be the two, maybe three. They're gonna be the most important as it stands right now on Netflix, okay? So there we go, so there's our three lines. We have three lines on the chart, and this is what we can use to satisfy our current, uh, our current analysis. So let's talk a little bit about candlestick patterns. There are multiple, multiple candlestick patterns, and the good news is if you're already into the intermediate series, uh, as a trader, you probably already know some of the candlestick patterns. My, you, put, you potentially have read my candlestick ebook, right? If you haven't, uh, welcome. Hop over to um, articles, videos. Where is it? Sorry, education ebooks, candlesticks. It's really good, really good ebook. If you haven't got a chance, to check it out. But it kind of goes in very in depth into candlesticks. But on this level, on these lines, what we're going to be looking for is we're going to look for. Uh, support zones and here's a rule that I use and I just mentioned earlier that I haven't seen talked about in any other textbook ebook website class so you can jot this down for memory forever I was kind of alluding to it a moment ago the open of giant white candles are a is a strong support What's a giant white candle, you might ask? You'll know when you see it, <laughs> okay? A big candle, something that's solid. So the open of a big white candle is gonna be a really good support. So those are always good prices to use and kind of draw into. All right, so the open of big white candles are a good support. So one of the candlestick patterns that I recommend that you get really, really comfortable with, and I'm gonna highlight two in this particular session uh, because obviously in the very, very first series of classes, I talked about the one white soldier. I'll talk about that a little bit uh, as well tonight. But I want you to get really good at um, the morning star, morning star and evening star reversal patterns. You can just call them star patterns. And the pretty rare but very powerful tweezer patterns. So we're going to talk a little bit about those tonight. And also, if you're watching the recording section of this, you can hop into the description box below uh, if you're watching from YouTube. And uh, I will also include another video called My Six Favorite Candlestick Patterns. But tonight, I'm going to talk about the Morning Star, Evening Star, and the Tweezer Patterns. And then also kind of discuss a little bit about um, the risk reward, the gap types, and what you're looking for. Scott says, what about this big black candle? Yep, that's a great point. So this big black candle, 
Take the exact same thing I said about the uh, about the bullish candle and just flip it. So the open of giant bearish candles is a strong resistance. And you'll see that resistance, even though it only worked out for an hour or two, worked out very, very well right there. Only for two hours, but it traded up and literally, as soon as it interacted with that price, people started selling. Yep, 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 yep. Great question. All right, so the tweezer, Evening Star, Morning Star, let's talk about them. So I'm gonna delete these three lines because the way the drawings, the drawing tool works, that's just the way it is. Um, I'm gonna zoom in really quick and let's talk about the tweezer top and the tweezer bottom. These are very easy candlestick patterns to recognize. Very, very easy. They're rare, but they're easy and they are powerful. That's the other good news. So the tweezer bottom, I'm seeing it right now if I have any examples. Uh, this is gonna be the closest that we have to a tweezer bottom right there. That one and that one. Okay, so the tweezer bottom right there. Let me look at numerically and see how close this is. Very close and very close. All right, so a tweezer bottom pattern, this is crucial. Here's the way it works. So this is again on an hourly time frame. This works on any time frame as far as the candlestick pattern is concerned, but tonight's class is called how to effectively use the hourly charts. So in use of the hourly charts, you're gonna be basing and getting into your trades using the hourly time frame, and it's a very, very helpful tool. That's what it's gonna provide you your bill paying money. That's gonna give you consistent swing trading results every single month. So a tweezer bottom, I wish I, I really wish my mouse worked, but it didn't, and it dri it's driving me nuts. All right, it is when you have the exact same, the exact same lows, the exact same lows. That's the first takeaway. So if you look at a candle and you go, do they have the same lows? It's probably very close to a tweezer bottom. What has to happen next is you have to, this is textbook, you have to have a bearish candle followed by a bullish candle. Now to get a textbook tweezer bottom, to get a textbook tweezer bottom, it needs to be the exact same low to the penny. Now could you say, well, it was one penny off, so it was very, very close. Yeah, of course, right? You can still see that it's a really good support. So the reason it's a good support is think about it. The stock is coming down, right? The stock is coming down, 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 and then it just stops, boop, and it just starts going up. There's no indecision, there's no, eh, maybe. It's like if you are running full speed into a brick wall, you are just going to stop. You're gonna stop moving and you're gonna hurt a little bit too. But if that, that's how a tweezer bottom is. The stock is going, 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 and it's like, nope, we're done. Boop, this price, that's it, final. Thank you very much for coming. Enjoy the show. And then it usually, and then it will bounce. So the exact same lows. So check out these first two candles over here. You have a bearish candle followed by a bullish candle. The low of this black candle is 116.23. The low of this candle is 116.25. Is that a perfect tweezer bottom, yes or no? The answer is no, nope, they're off by two pennies. They're off by two pennies. But it's really close, I get it. What about these two candles right here? Black candle followed by a white candle. This is 118.48 and this is 118.47. <laughs> is it the exact same? The answer, no. They're not the exact same, they're off by a penny. They're off by a penny. But taking that into consideration, they are strong patterns. So for our examples tonight, let's just say that those are tweezer bottoms, okay? We can, we can still say if we're trading those, I would look at that trade and be like, you know what, I like this, I'm still gonna take the trade bullish, <laughs> right? Still gonna take this trade bullish. So, it, you know, it, it doesn't matter if they're the exact same or not, but if they are the exact same, stronger. Brandon has a very good question. He goes, does it matter if they have dissimilar bodies? Nope, it doesn't matter. Now, think about this though. Think about it. Um, I'm trying to come up with an example visually here. I don't really see one. But well, let's just use the first example right here. Is this bullish candle bigger than the bearish candle? Yes or no? Yep, 
The bullish candle is bigger than the bearish candle. So if the bullish candle is bigger than the bearish candle, that is usually a very good sign. That is usually a very good sign. If the candles are the exact same size, that's also a very good sign. Um, over here in this scenario, this bearish candle is bigger than this bullish candle. Now I, I, I can see that even if I'm saying that, we can, we'll, we'll notice that this trade didn't really work and this one did, <laughs> right, for the bulls. I can see that. But in most, in, in most situations, and I can actually tell you why this one worked, uh, the second one worked better in just a second. But um, usually you want the bullish candle to be stronger than the bearish candle, if possible. But to answer your question, Brandon, no. No, they don't have to be the exact same body. The bodies can be everywhere. It can be wicks. It doesn't matter. As long as the lows are the same, that's very, very powerful. Bearish candle followed by a bullish candle. So the exact same lows. That's the tweezer bottom. And the tweezer top is the exact same thing except in reverse. Okay? A tweezer bottom and then you have a tweezer top. So this is not a tweezer top, but it's very close to one. A tweezer top is a white candle followed by a black candle and those have the exact same high, the exact same high price. So this white candle, 125.75, this one is 125.68. So yes, it's off by seven cents. So it's not a perfect tweezer top, but tweezer tops are strong patterns. Obviously this is a weaker one. Even if it was a tweezer top, can we agree that this, this would be a weaker one because the black candle is so small compared to the white candle? Right, so this one's a very, very small pattern. Uh, it's not a tweezer top, and even if it was, it'd be a very weak one. All right, so let's talk about why. Let me go ahead and delete all my um, lines and answer this question. Ricky says, so tweezer tops are bearish. That is correct. Tweezer, tweezer bottoms are bullish. That is absolutely correct. Yep, you nailed it. So let's talk about these patterns that I was pointing to right here again with these arrows. So this one and this one and this one and this one. I do know why the second one worked better than the first one. And we'll talk about that right now. So remember, I just mentioned a second ago, the star patterns, evening star and morning star. Evening star and morning star. It's okay if you forget the names of these sometimes. Again, the names are the least important thing possible. So as far as the names go, I still have to think to myself, uh, which one is this? <laughs> morning star and evening star. Morning star is bullish. Okay. Morning stars are bullish. Evening stars are bearish. Scott says, morning the sun is rising up. Evening the sun is going down. There you go. It's another good word association to remember this. Bye. Thank you, Scott. So yeah, morning star, bullish, evening star, bearish. Again, the names, you could call this the mashed potato dance. You could call this Captain Kirk and his nine heroes. You know, it doesn't really matter. You could you could name them after Harry Potter characters if you want. This is Dumbledore and this is Severus Snape. It, it could be anything. So whatever you want to name it as, that's fine. But here is something that a lot of textbooks get a little too granular on, is they make it exact. They make it exact. So let's discuss uh, an evening star and a morning star pattern. So a morning star and evening star pattern consists of three candles. Okay, it consists of three candlestick patterns. The first candle is a, uh, we're going to be looking at right now the morning star. So the first candle, I'll kind of draw it with the correct color, is usually a bearish candle of some size and some magnitude. So you don't know that this one is a special one at all until after the fact. It's just a normal candle. You're like, all right, whatever, cool. So you got your, just your general, average, normal bearish candle. The second one is the really important candle. The second one is an indecision candle of some kind. It usually has a small body and some kind of upper lower and or both shadow. It's a candle that doesn't really look exciting. It's like a very weird, strange, kind of like, eh. It's an indecision candle. It's like, hey, I don't really know what the heck is happening. Yes, it has some sentiment, but it's like, you know, whatever. 
And then the third candle, and this is kind of, this is the important part. The third candle is usually some bullish candle of some kind. So you get a bearish candle, you get an indecision candle, and then you get a bullish candle. That's a morning star reversal. Now for some of you, this is gonna take practice. And what I would love for you guys to do is uh, look at some charts, try to find your morning star reversals on an hourly time frame, and then feel free to post your results on the Real Life Trading Facebook page. You can do that at any point. So try to find some morning star reversals. Because the key is you can really use anything kind of sorta as a morning star reversal as long as it has three candles, one of them is an indecision candle, and the third one is bullish. <laughs> That's usually where textbooks get a little bit wrong. You can call anything a morning star or an evening star reversal as long as one of the candles is an indecision candle. That's a key, okay? That is key. One of those candles has to be an indecision candle. It has to be a candle that doesn't look like much is happening. And then for a morning star, one of them has to be a bullish candle. Okay? So let's look at this really quick and let's ask, is that a morning star reversal pattern? Yes or no? What do you guys think? Is that a morning star pattern? Yes or no? So we're going to get some no's and we're getting some yeses. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. That's a morning star reversal pattern. So let's ask why. All right. So the first candle, the first candle, so this one right here is a indecision candle with a long lower shadow. Long lower shadows represent buying pressure. Then you get a bearish candle, and then the third candle is a bullish candle. That's the key. The third candle is bullish, and there's an indecision candle somewhere in there. So yeah, it's a morning star reversal. Scott says it's a shaved bottom also. Exactly. Yeah, the low and the open of this candle are the exact same. So this pattern right here, is this a morning star pattern, yes or no? Is that a morning star pattern, yes or no? The answer is yes. Yes, it is. You got a bearish candle, followed by an indecision candle, followed by a bullish candle. So now the question becomes, where do you get in bullish? Where do you get in? Well, usually you find the most bearish candle out of those three, and you get in above that. <laughs> Okay, so if you're looking at a morning star pattern, you are trying to find the most bearish candle, which in this situation would be right about here, and this is where you're gonna get in bullish, right there, right above the wick of this bearish candle, and your stop on this trade would be right here. That would be it. So let's do some math really quick on this, and I got the numbers over here just as a practice, okay? So let's say your entry was 119.40 and your stop was 117.26. So I'll draw, I'll write the numbers out for you a little bit bigger. So 117.26 is your stop and 119.40 is the entry. So the green line and the red line. Now, if you're watching uh, from the very first classes, the second class is our risk mitigation class where we teach this principle. All of you here are very familiar with that class. I know that. So let's just look at this and go 1940 minus 117.26. And you're going to trade an R of 200. So if you watch class two, you know what an R is. You know what your risk. That's your risk. That's how much money you're going to lose on this trade if it does not go as planned, which happens about 50% of the time. So how many shares are you going to be buying on this trade, ladies and gentlemen? Let's do some math really quick. How many shares are we buying? 119.40 minus 117.26 equals $2.14. That is the difference between this green line and this red line. Okay, $2.14. 200 divided by 214 equals 
93 shares. 93 shares times an investment of $119.40 equals $11,158. That's how many shares that you would buy. Or if you're trading options, you would buy one contract. Okay? Yeah, you guys are exactly correct. So if you're trading options, it'd be one contract. If you're trading shares, $11,158 of an investment, 93 shares on Netflix. Just simply recognizing that morning star pattern. So now the evening star pattern, ladies and gentlemen, is the exact same thing again, but in reverse. So the evening star pattern is you get a textbook, all right, you get a, this one could become one tomorrow. You get a bullish candle followed by an indecision candle of some kind followed by a bearish candle. That is kind of your textbook evening star reversal. Something looks like this. So let's look at Netflix right now. We don't have any more data. This was literally the close of today. So is the second candle on the, the very last candle that we see on this chart is that an indecision candle? And I would argue, yeah, it's a very small candle. It didn't really do anything. It's very small body, which I said was, 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 was important earlier. It's a very, very small body candle. And if we get a candle that looks like this right here at the open tomorrow, which I hope it doesn't, but let's say it does, that would complete your evening star reversal pattern. So let's do a few of these, uh, a few practice of these. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, is that an evening star pattern? Yes or no? Nikhil says, does indecision candle should have wicks? Yes, it should. Absolutely should have wicks. Great question. So is that an evening star reversal pattern? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Um, trying to find another one. What about this one right here? Is that an evening star reversal pattern? Yep, absolutely. You got an evening star pattern right there. Totally. Absolutely is, right? White candle followed by an indecision candle followed by a bearish candle of some kind. Um, those, I could make an argument for two or three more. Like I could make an argument for this one right here. I could make an argument that that's an evening star reversal pattern. Pretty easily, in fact. Right? You have a white candle followed by an indecision candle followed by a bearish candle. So the question is, when do you enter your evening star reversals? You enter your evening star reversals below the low of the bullish, the most bullish candle of the three. So in this situation, you'd have a trigger right below the low of that candle. In this situation, you'd have a trigger right below the low of that candle. And in this situation, you have a trigger right below the low of that candle. So when I say that candle, I'm talking about the very, very first bullish candle of those groups. That's your entry. So if you had an entry below the low of this white candle right here, this trigger right there, would you have gotten triggered in, yes or no? And the answer is nope. No, you would not have. Wouldn't have gotten triggered in bearish, which is cool. So we've talked about tweezer bottoms and tweezer tops. We've talked about morning and evening star reversals. Folks, there is, and this is life right here. That's why I named the company Real Life Trading. There is zero way you get better at this other than doing it. Going in and putting in work, there's no way you get better. Okay? It's just not going to happen. If you're here watching this video, it's because you love the stock market. So dive in, start looking at some charts, and trying to find these candlestick patterns. And if you emailed me and said, hey, Jeremy, is this an evening star pattern right here? You know what I would say? You know, I, I wouldn't call it an evening star reversal usually, but I could see why you think that, and that's a good step in the right direction. <laughs> it's not the most amazing evening star, but I would say, you know, you at least took effort. It's not bad. That's the thing. On a 1 to 10 scale, 10 being the best evening star reversal you could possibly find in your life, 
that'd probably be about a 2.93. So we're right around there. So it's on the scale. At least it's not a one. The reason it's not an evening star reversal is because there's no real bullish candles in there anywhere. And uh, the first candle is a very big indecision candle. I would say, yeah, it's okay evening star, but realistically what you're getting is you're getting a high wave candle by itself. Entry is right here. You get an inside day candle. Stop will be right there, and that would be your entry. You don't need to wait for the third candle. You could, but you don't need to. So let's practice another stock. Um, we looked at Johnson & Johnson yesterday. Type in a one if you guys remember us doing that. Here's Johnson & Johnson. So Johnson & Johnson, remember yesterday, this is the exact same chart. You're welcome to go back to class two and just kind of reiterate it. But in class two, I mentioned, hey guys, if we get, you know, we open or get into this area right here, I'm gonna be bearish. And I had a little bit of a support line. You guys remember where that support line was? Let me pull it up really quick. Boom. There is a support line, 109.23. That was it. 109.23, and we got uh, 10, 9 cents away from actually trading to that price and bouncing. So this is what we talked about yesterday. Not today, but we mentioned that yesterday in class yesterday. Textbook. Yeah, so if you go into a different time frame, like a five-minute chart, and let's say that, oh, I don't know, you had planned this in advance and you were watching it, right? Because we thought about it yesterday. We literally drew this out <laughs> yesterday. Could you have spotted this morning star reversal pattern? And my argument would be, yeah, sure. Now, where would you have gotten in on that morning star reversal pattern? Well, that's the key. Remember, I mentioned that you really want to kind of get in above the high of the most bearish candle. So really, the most bearish candle is this one right here. So you probably wouldn't have gotten in bullish until right about there. Oh, how terrible, right? Or as a stock trades up, trades lower, could you guys consider this a morning star reversal on a five minute, yes or no? Yep, absolutely, sure you could, why not? Because it is one. It is definitely a morning star pattern. What pattern is this right here? A tweezer bottom. Not a perfect one, it's one penny away, but it's very, very close. But when the stock broke that very, very strong support level, beep, that's what caused that little quick sell off right there. Let's do another stock. Someone pick any stock, first one that gets typed in, that's what I'm gonna go look at. Uh, GE says Brandon, okay. So let's go look at General Electric. General Electric, and we're gonna pop up on a daily chart, and um, do I have any lines on General Electric? I don't, okay, great. So what I'm gonna do is let's just go ahead and create uh, two support resistance lines on General Electric based on the daily chart. I'm gonna draw that one, and I'm gonna draw this one. Those are my two. Here's the candlesticks that I was looking at when I drew that, right there, right there. Those were it, uh, that and, and these. Okay, that was it. Those are the only three candles I looked at. Just so happened that it lined up with this gap over here, this gap over here. And yes, you missed some gobbledygook over here. Nom, 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 nom. You missed some of that, but that's okay. The reason I'm using this price right here is because it's the most recent, right? That's, that's the most recent, so just use that one. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we have a daily chart and we can see what's the primary trend. The primary trend is sideways. All right, the primary trend is sideways. So in a sideways market, you're looking to buy off support, sell at resistance. Buy off support, sell off resistance. Buy low, sell high. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hop in here to an hourly chart. So here's an hourly time frame on General Electric. We're gonna pull this up. Here we go. And you'll notice, uh, let's just look at this little pattern right here. We've got some really good gaps and we got uh, some very powerful signals in here. There's a bullish gap and go. There's a bullish gap and go. Those two situations. Um, you've got a very large morning star reversal pattern right here. But it is a morning star reversal pattern. Got a hammer candle right there at that support. So regardless of all of that, let's now ask the question, a very strong question, what the heck do we do now? What the heck do we do now? Well, we've got our lines. Let's say we zoom in a little bit more. 
because we're playing GE, and here's what we see. Here's what we got. Let's go look at some candles, shall we? So here's our candlesticks. Uh, let's go look for a few patterns. Um, trying to find some, not trying, I see a few. I'm trying to find a really good example of one. Um, I don't see anything wonderful, actually. Nothing to be a really good teaching point, but nonetheless. So this 3144, is this a resistance or a support now? It is now a support. It was a resistance. We can see that right here, right here, right here, right here. Now what's important, ladies and gentlemen, and this is another very, very big takeaway, is look at the volume and look at the candles. There's a lot of white candles in a row on General Electric. This is the hourly chart. So you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white candles in a row. Remember, buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. So if you buy right now, you're gonna be buying high because the stock is doing this. It's just going straight up. Keep in mind, you've always gotta have these ebbs and flows. That is natural. Ebbs and flows are natural. You're going to get that. So just remind yourself, buy low, sell high. If you look at a start and you go, man, this thing is high. This stock has moved really quickly in the past. That's okay. Because if you're not in it, you've missed it. So give it a little bit of time and do what? Here's a big takeaway from tonight's lesson. Tell yourself and create a plan that says, all right, I'm not in. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be in control of myself and I'm going to say, all right, stock, this is exactly what I want you to do. I'm not going to let you control me. I'm going to control myself because we're never going to be able to control the stock market, right, ladies and gentlemen? It's uncontrolled. It just can't happen. It's like me controlling the movement of the earth, okay? So instead of trying to control the movement of the earth, I'm just going to go with the flow. Is it winter? All right, cool. I'm going to wear a jacket. I'm not going to try to stop the globe from spinning. I'm just going to put on more clothes. So the beautiful part right here is it doesn't really matter what your strategy is. It doesn't really matter what your approach is. What matters is can you create a plan? That part's pretty easy. The plan is going to be pretty easy. But once you create the plan, will you have the fortitude to follow it? Mm, that's always the key. That's the hard part of trading. That's the hard part of trading. So what would I do in this situation? Here's exactly what I would do. This will be my setup right here. A limit buy, as you guys all know, more than likely, is you telling the broker, I want to buy at 31.43 or cheaper. That's what a limit buy is. You're saying, I want to limit the amount at which I'm buying something. So just like if you're trying to buy a house, you're going to tell the real estate broker or the real estate agent uh, what price you want and you have a budget, right? You have a limit. I, I only want to pay this much. Hi, my name is Scott and I have a $9 million limit. I don't want to go higher than $9 million. I'm on a budget, okay? So when you're doing a limit buy, you're telling the broker $31.43 or cheaper. So in this scenario, what would happen if General Electric opens here tomorrow at $31.40? Which price would you get filled at? $31.40 or $31.43? You would get filled at 3140. And again, this limit buy, this is nothing special. Every broker in the world has one of these, and if they don't, quit using them and go get one that does. All right, limit buys are very simple. You're literally buying the stock at a limit. A very, very simple broker order. And this will allow you to set the trade and forget it. You can set all of these trades up. So let's go ahead and practice really quickly our risk mitigation. So our risk mitigation. Uh, entry 3143. So I'll kind of write this out. 30, 
91 is our stop. Now again, I know all of you guys know this who are here live, but for those of you who are watching for the first time, this is gonna be really cool. 3143, go ahead and let's do the math for a $200 risk unit. How many shares are we buying on this trade? So let's see. Um, dun, 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 dun. Try, I can do this math in my head. I don't know why I'm using a calculator. All right. Richard Farr has a number. Chris Albanese and Akil have a number. Down, bam, bam, down, down. Who else has a number for me? Who else has a number? 384 shares. Mm hmm. 384 shares. So you could buy either four contracts or 384 shares. 384 times $31.43 equals $12,088 investment. Crazy how we're spending about the same amount of money trading General Electric as we're trading on Netflix. <laughs> right? It's about the same investment. Crazy because we're having the exact same risk. That's the way it works. All right, so General Electric, what we're looking for is looking for this. We're looking to buy into support. And then, ladies and gentlemen, your job as a trader is done. From there, you have no idea what's going to happen. You have no clue. Will the trade work or not? Doesn't matter. The goal is create the plan, follow the plan. 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 I have gone broke and I have seen many traders lose a lot of money from doing one very simple mistake. The mistake is they create a plan and then they don't follow it. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to risk $200 until you lose four trades in a row. And then once you lose four trades in a row, for some reason, you think the fifth trade is just going to be the best trade in the world and you risk $1,000. And then you lose on that $1,000 trade. Now you're down five trades in a row and you're like, man, I'm such an idiot. I broke my plan. What should I do now? Well, I'm going to double down. So you risk two grand. Guess what? You lose on that trade too. Now you're 0 for 6. Now you're feeling upset. Now you're thinking about emailing me, but you're like, no, Jeremy's going to make fun of me because he's never done this because he's perfect. So I'm not going to email Jeremy and tell him my problems. So I'm just going to take a very small trade on the next one because I'm 0 for 6. I'm probably going to lose on the next trade. So you risk $50 on the seventh trade. And what happens? That trade just goes amazing. Man, you're like, what? All right, that one works out so well. So you take $10,000 risk on the next trade, trying to get back into the green, and then you lose on that trade because you can't handle the risk. Even if the trade is going in your favor, you're going to get out too quickly because you're just not ready for that kind of pressure. Type in a one if you've been down that road, ladies and gentlemen. My hands are in the air. Okay, I'm swaying them like I just don't care. That's how I know... You've been in that position because I've been in that position. We've all been in that position. The best and the only way that we become better and more profitable traders is we have to learn to follow our system. We have to learn to follow our rules. We have to learn to be patient. It's the hardest part of trading. But if you're not patient, you will lose in trading. It's simple as that. I'm telling you straight up. The magic formula, you got to be patient. Because you can have whatever risk mitigation tools you want. You can have whatever risk you want. It could be, you could have a, you could have a million dollar account, but if you can't trade profitably a $1,000 account or a $10,000 account, you're not going to be able to trade a million dollar account. <laughs> I'm just letting you guys know, right? Think about that. That's a really big takeaway. Really let that sink in for a second because a lot of you right now are wishing for more money in your mind before you go to sleep in your life, I mean, heck, I am. I think about it, I'm like, man, I really want more money. More money would be awesome. More money would be exciting. I, I would love to have $500 million in my bank account right now. Could you handle $500 million? I mean, think about it. Could you really? Because if you've taken a, a, an account with $5,000 and you lost all of it, do you think you could trade $500 million? Do you think you could invest $500 million properly? No. That's why you don't have it. That's why I don't have it. I don't have $500 million. As much as that might break your guys' heart, I just don't. Because I'm not that type of person yet. I haven't gotten to the point where my brain, once my body and my brain sync up, 
and they go, oh man, this guy has all the skills he needs to have $500 million. It'll happen. But until then, <laughs> you know, it's just not going to happen. So that's why I'm going to keep, keep working at it. Keep trying to improve my skills. Keep trying to be more patient. Keep trying to hold my winners even longer. Because if you're not patient, you will never be making the kind of money that you want to make. All right? I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. All right, so let's do one more example uh, on another stock. So I'm going to go ahead and throw another stock out there for me. Lily says GoPro. She was quick to the trigger. So GoPro. GoPro is going to be an easy one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this daily chart. So here's a daily chart on GoPro, and uh, I actually already have a support drawn at 904. But let, we're looking at this trade, we're seeing what? What direction? What direction? Pew. Bearish. Yes, going down. So what direction should we be looking to take a trade? Either bearish or we wait for some kind of support. It's that simple. So you're either waiting for a support to kick in. So on a daily chart, let me just show this daily chart really quick since we're here. So here's the support at $9.04 on the daily chart. Would it be a crazy assumption? Would it be a crazy assumption to right here sit, well not sit and watch, but every single day be by your computer watching for a reversal signal on the hourly chart at that price on GoPro? Would that be a crazy thing? Yeah, why not? Is it going to happen? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I can guarantee you that there was one down here, and I can guarantee that there was one down here. In fact, there is a pattern that we've talked about tonight on GoPro right here. Who can tell me which one that is? I'll give you a hint. It contains three candles. Morning Star Reversal. Yep. Morning Star. So now what we do on GoPro is we wait. We wait for it to trade down to 904. And as it comes into 904, what do we do? We can create a plan and we can follow that plan. Would it be crazy? Would it be crazy to have this plan? Hold on, bear with me for just a second. So let's go. We go let's say we go to the hourly chart. And you go, okay, $9.04 is a really good support based on the daily chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this trade and forget it. I'm going to set it and I'm just going to buy it as soon as it comes down there. Is that crazy? Is that a, is that a wrong thing to do? Not even almost. <laughs> not even close. Go for it. Sure. Why not? It's called planning ahead. Right? That's great. It's phenomenal in fact. Now, now will you do it is going to be the question. Well, you do it if the next day, right, this happened, you, you see this candle coming in, boop, you know, are you still going to buy when this candle's right there? All right, let's say you haven't gotten to the trade, are you still going to buy? Is it still going to be an automatic order? The part is, it's like, man, whatever the plan is, just follow the plan. If you say you're going to buy a 904, or buy a 904. Are you going to be right or wrong? I don't know. Just don't lose a lot of money finding out. Right? Lose your risk. Lose the amount of money that you're comfortable with. Now, let's also say that you're like, okay, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to buy around this area, but I want to wait for a Morningstar reversal or a tweezer bottom. What if you said that? All right, cool. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Now, go and do that. Okay? Liz says, what to do if you're in bullish now? Set some stops, because it is bearish. It's going lower. Know where your stop is, know where to get out, know where to mitigate your risk. Because until 9.04, it's just going to be a slow, slippery slope until then. Best case scenario, you got a little bit of a support there. We retest, then we roll over. We trade the 9.04, and then from there, honestly, I really don't know what GoPro does. I truly don't. It, it probably will bounce, but I'm not sure. Right, so over here on the daily chart, that's pretty much it. That's what we're looking at. You got that support. You can see back over here, the reason I placed that stop at $8.39 is 
is because we never have gone down that low before on GoPro. That was below these prices over here. So again, that could be a trade that you could set up. And, you know, if it's like I'm coming down, how long could it take for that trade setup right there to happen? Is that going to happen overnight? No. Look over and how look at how long it took last time. You went from May to mid September. When's the last time anyone here was in a trade from May to September? <laughs> That's a long time. So I'm not saying you can't be in that trade, but what I'm saying is using the hourly chart effectively. Using the hourly chart effectively, I really do and truly do think that you have the ability to catch this move, make a gain, 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 get stopped out here, lose some money, catch this gain, and make it, you know, catch that trade, make a gain. I really feel like trading the hourly chart, becoming a master of a few stocks, focusing, creating your plan, and following it, using the very, very simple steps that we have covered and went over tonight will help you become a better trader. Will help you, in fact, become a real life, professionally profitable trader. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, class four, which is gonna be the next one, is gonna be discussing all this information again as a reiteration. We're gonna be talking a little bit about gaps and what to look for, what to notice, what to see, and what to think based on those gaps, based on those candles, based on those sentiments. And again, we'll kind of just cover risk reward because risk mitigation is key. You've seen in this class and you've seen in every other class that I teach, risk mitigation and creating a trading plan and following it and being patient. Those four things, practice them tirelessly for years. What other degree, what other education can you get for, oh, I don't know, two to three grand and two to three years? Not that many, right? If you're getting a bachelor's degree, you're spending a lot more money than that probably in just in books. If you're getting a degree to be a dentist, a, a high, dental hygienist, dental hygienist, it yeah. doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're going to tech, uh, some kind of tech college, you're working to be an EMT or a fireman or, I mean, it doesn't matter what degree it is that you're trying to get. I'm simply here to tell you, this is one of the most influential career path that you can go down because what you're doing is you're investing in yourself and you're learning a skill that you can use for your entire life on top of the degree that you might be looking for. So if you're a structural engineer, if you're an electrical engineer, if you're a chiropractor, if you're a police person, if you're a teacher, if you're, uh, you've worked for the IRS, doesn't matter. You can work and you can trade using the hourly time frames, using the daily time frames, simply creating a plan and simply following it. That's the truth, ladies and gentlemen, right there. It's all about the system, it's all about the plan, and it's all about having the discipline and the patience to simply follow the plan. And yes, there will be times where you feel like, oh my gosh, it's too overwhelming, I can't do it, I've been doing this a year and I haven't made any progress. <laughs> I had a trader, true story, message me uh, about, Two months ago, is verbatim, Jeremy, I've been following your instructions for a month and I haven't made any money yet. What am I doing wrong? What was my reply? Well, I'll tell you my reply. My reply was, hey, comma, person. I was like, pretend that you are in a medical school. You were in a, you're in a medical school and you've been going to medical school for one month. Are they going to let you do surgery on a real life human being? And he goes, eh, point taken. <laughs> one month? One month? I've made mistakes that last a month. <laughs> you know? I've, I've made bad decisions for an entire month at one point. I mean, it's like a month is nothing. If you're going to do anything in life, do it correct. If you're going to put any amount of time in, give it your all, give it devotion, really be there, really be at it, really work at it. Because if you're going to make any money doing anything, if you're going to truly be fulfilled doing anything, it's going to take time. Time is our most valuable resource. So use it doing something that you truly care about. And for me, that's teaching the world 
trading the stock market, and enriching lives. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. You guys are incredible. I will see you in the next class. If you're watching from the recording, you can just click on it and zoop, you're going to zoom into the future. It's amazing. Otherwise, here on planet Earth, I'm going to have to wait 24 more hours for this class. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are absolutely terrific. And until next time, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you later. Bye.